Hey there, thank you so much for deciding to hang out with me for a couple of minutes today. Well, we take a look at a Docker container that may actually help keep you safer online. And the Docker container that we're gonna take a look at today is called WebCheck. Now, if we take a look at the WebCheck website, this is kind of their homepage, their landing page, uh, where you can put in a URL if you want to uh, just kind of jump in and take a look at a given URL, or we can take a look at these scrolling images over here on the right side where we can see the kind of information that we might be able to get from a website when we run a check on it via web check, whether it's this version that's already online or our own hosted version. Now, something to keep in mind with this is that you may not always be able to get all of the different information about a website depending on what's available and what the service is able to gather from that website. Now, we also might consider this an OSINT website. And if you're not familiar with that term, uh, we'll just jump over here where Google's AI has defined it for us, which is just short for open source intelligence, which is the process of gathering, analyzing, and interpreting information from public sources to help inform decision making. So kind of like it says here, uh, in just 20 seconds or whatever time frame you put in your environment variables, you can see what attackers already know. And that's gonna give you a bunch of options to get information about different things about either your website, or if you're like me, like I get a lot of emails from a lot of different companies from all over the world. Some of them are legit, most of them aren't. And I think this may actually help me kind of go through the process of, of, of kind of weeding out some of the garbage that I get on a regular basis. So since, since we're already here, let's use their instance for one check. Then we'll go over to my instance and take a look and kind of go from there. And then we'll actually talk about the simple process of getting this installed. Um, so let's just put in my URL here. We'll put in dbtechreviews.com. And we'll click analyze. And that's going to, oh, Apparently it really wants the H like that. There we go. Okay, so um, so this, here up at the top, we can see that it is, or it ran a bunch of stuff. It did it in two seconds. It says 2000 milliseconds there. By default, the Docker container that we're gonna take a look at uh, times out after 10 seconds, but I believe with an environment variable, we can actually extend that to whatever we need it to be for what we're doing or whatever we're comfortable with. Below that, on the going back over to the left side of the page here, we can see that it says show, show details. If we click that, here we can get an idea of all of the different things that it did, like getting the IP, the address, or the location, the SSL, the domain. Now there are a few different things in here like quality, tech stack, uh, those both through errors, and we can actually go in and take a look at what those errors happen to be. Now, in here it's saying, hey, we're missing a Google API key. Now that's something that we can add via, uh, via our environment variables in the Docker Compose that we're going to take a look at in a little while. It looks like they haven't added that to this set up. I'm sure that that could end up getting expensive for the developer if they just had this publicly facing with an API. So, um, but anyway, that's that's why that one failed out is because there wasn't an API key for that particular bit of functionality. Uh, so we're going to close that. And next we'll take a look at like tech stack here. It also threw an error. Um, and it says that could not find Chromium. We're also gonna run into that a little bit later on when we get into uh, the screenshot portion of this, but you can install Chromium in your setup, though I haven't been able to get it to work. And there have been a few other people who have had the same issue with this kind of stuff popping up, but we'll get into Chromium a little bit later. We're gonna close that. We've got server info, um, and that one came through fine cookies. Uh, show error here, the cookie job bailed with a skipped state after 13 or 1.3 seconds. Uh, the server responded with the following error, uh, no no cookies. So that's good. Like if you go to my website, it shouldn't it shouldn't throw any cookies at you. So there's, there's that. We're gonna close that. Uh, again, we've got headers, DNS, hosts, all of this stuff came through really well. Uh, trace route, if we take a look at that, um, command not found. So apparently their server doesn't have trace route enabled and that's why it threw that error. So if you're installing this and you start seeing a lot of these error messages popping up regularly, you may be able to then do your own troubleshooting and figure out, oh, well, this doesn't have trace route installed. Maybe I should install that, reboot my container and try again. So just, just kind of little, little things here. 
um, security, DNS, firewall, DNSSEC, HSTS, threats, mail config, again, show error. The callback argument must be a type function received undefined. So it wasn't able to pull any an, any uh, mail config information from its look or th with its pull there or whatever. Uh, archives was a success rank. Uh, show error here. Skipping isn't ranked in the top 100 billion sites yet. That's fine. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> screenshot error. So again, here, um, browser was not found in the configured executable path of user bin Chromium. I went ahead and, and installed that on my setup and I still get errors. I don't know if, it, if it's a configuration error or what, but again, this is an issue that other people have run into and have opened tickets for or, or issues with on the GitHub repository for web check. But again, we've got a bunch of other stuff in here. Uh, features uh, was also, uh, is throwing an error because the built with API is missing in the environment. So again, that's another API uh, key that you can get and add to your Docker Compose via an environment variable to help get more information about uh, whatever uh, domain or website you're trying to get more information on. Um, so I'm gonna close this. I'm actually gonna scroll back up and minimize this show details thing here. And here we can see a lot of a lot more information about uh, dbtechreviews.com. The server location, um, Technically that's wrong. Um, the, <laughs> the server location is, is, is right behind me in that rack. I am not uh, in, in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, but because of, um, because of the IP address that comes up when you ping it, which is a Cloudflare IP, it totally makes sense that it would say, oh, this is, this is showing up in Canada, even though again, it's literally right behind me here. You've got SSL certificate here, uh, when it was renewed, when it expires, um, uh, with again, a bunch more information in there about the issuer, the domain name, um, some curve information. I'm not super up to speed on SSLs, so I don't know what a lot of that means, but uh, we can take a look at like, the registered domain, uh, which is of course dbtechreviews.com. When it was created, looks like I've had it for more than seven years now. Uh, when it was updated, when it expires, I just seem to do it one like for one year at a time for some reason. We can see where it was registered and the IANAID for the registrar. Uh, nothing on the uh, server info. Again, if we click that, uh, we can get more information about what the issue may be there. Social tags for title, description, canonical URL, Twitter site, and the generator, which was um, the site kit by Google. And we've got an actual version number there. Uh, DNS records, again, these are Cloudflare DNS records, which is why, of course, it said, hey, this is this is in Canada when it's, it's not. Um, HTTP security, uh, content security policy, uh, strict transport policy, X, or X content type options. There's a lot of stuff in here that not only can you find out about another website or even your own, you can look at this and be like, oh, well, here are some areas that I could implement in my, maybe it's my reverse proxy or maybe it's in my, my, my domain settings or whatever the case is to help ensure that your, your domain, your, your, um, your setup is more secure than it currently is. So you can actually use this not only as a way to gather more information about people emailing you or reaching out to you, whatever, but also as a way to help secure your own assets online, especially if you're doing self-hosting. Um, like over here, DNSSEC, not present. I need to work on that. Let's, let's jump back over here to where it says headers. We can see the date, the content type, the transfer encoding, um, cache control, uh, cache status is currently expired. I don't know why that hasn't been updated. Um, um, the link, transport security, there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Firewall, jumping back over here a little bit. Uh, there, there is a firewall, it is Cloudflare. The archive history, which I actually kind of dig. Um, so the first scan was August 7th of 2018. The last scan uh, was October 1st of this year. Total scans, uh, change count, average size, uh, average day between scans. And if we pop this open in a new tab, it will take us over to the Wayback Machine where we can see, um, you know, like so, some of our different scans here. Let's just pop that open. Uh, we'll give this a second to load. And here we can see what my website looked like on that particular day. So I really dig that they've got the archive history in here as well. Uh, we've got a TL TLS a Cypher Suites, we've got linked pages, we've got internal link counts and external link counts. Uh, so we can actually look at those to see 
uh, you know, where my internal and external links are pointed to or from. Uh, we've got redirects um, because I've got it redirected um, to, to HTTPS dbtechreviews.com. Um, we can see open ports here. I'm not entirely sure why port 8080 is open. That's weird. Um, but, you know, again, that's something that I can take a look at and see. Uh, DNS servers, um, we don't have a DOH support turned on, so maybe I should fix that. Um, is there a security.txt uh, file present, which is having, and having that file ensures security researchers know how and where to safely report, report vulnerabilities. So that might be something that you would wanna add to your own setups. Uh, HSTS check, is it enabled? Yes, max age, including subdomains. All of that looks good. Threats, phishing status, malware status, none found. Yay, uh, that's that's great. Uh, TXT records, um, I had to add this. This looks stupid, but I actually had to add that to my uh, TXT records to get this website to remove me from their listings. Um, I've also got some other stuff in here for like daily motion, Google site verification, things like that. Carbon footprint, uh, to give you an idea of what is what is your website costing in carbon footprint stuff. So that's kind of neat. Uh, TLS security issues. Uh, all of that looks good over here. I don't see anything in, in there with red checks or anything. Uh, TLS handshake simulation with a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different ways to to look at it. Windows, or sorry, Chrome on Windows Seven, uh, uh, OS X, again Windows Seven, Bing, Android, uh, different ways that it's looked at the website to make sure that it's working appropriately. Um, so maybe you're a web developer and you want to make sure that it's always going to work. Um, you could really, really start wanting to beat your head on the wall uh, for looking at like IE6 and IE8. Um, but that that that's PTSD from when I was a web developer years ago. Um, but again, you can also crawl rules uh, down here for just, just moving on. A uh, user agent is all uh, and disallow. So that's why my website isn't, um, isn't in the top 100 million or whatever is because I've actually uh, encouraged webs or crawlers to not uh, to not crawl my website. Maybe I should fix that. I don't know. Uh, server status, is it up? Yep, it sure is. Response time was less than a second. And the status code is a 200, which is good. We can see uh, site maps and we can see our, is our website or is that website, whatever, on any known block lists. And no, no, it's not. But that's just one website here. Let's, let's do a couple more and then we're gonna take a look at how easy it is to get this set up. I wanna do this actually on my website on my instance, we're gonna click like that. And here we go, it is, it's done uh, 30 jobs successfully, it skipped one and five failed. Uh, I did that in three seconds. So let's take a look at this just real quick. Uh, quality, again, I don't have that API in there. Uh, tech stack, again, I don't have that API in there. Next, we've got like server info, all of this did really well. Um, our rank, uh, again, was skipped because it, is, it isn't in the top 100 million sites yet. And again, I don't expect it to be a screenshot error. Now, here we can see that this actually looks a little bit different than the previous error that we saw. Um, and again, I've got, um, I've got Chromium installed in my system and I've got um, the, the Chromium path set up in the Docker container or in the Docker compose, I guess. Um, but I'm still getting some error messages here. Again, we'll take a look at this issue over on the GitHub in a moment, but just know that um, even if you do have it set up, it still may not work. Uh, hopefully the developer will be able to get that fixed at some point. Again, we've got more, more stuff here that all looks good. Uh, features, we've got an error. Um, because again, I don't have the built with API key in there. Uh, show error here um, because this site doesn't have a sitemap. So that, that's fine. I don't think it needs a sitemap, but it is what it is in this particular case. Um, so that's that's all of the jobs that ran successfully. The one that was skipped, the five that failed. Uh, we can we can minimize this. And then again, we can see that, hey, hey, you're you're in Canada. No, we're not. We're, we're right back here behind me in that rack. Um, but again, a lot more of the same information. Uh, we'll just kind of take this column by column instead of bouncing around here. So server location, again, it thinks it's in Canada because of the Cloudflare IP address. Uh, cookies, uh, social tags, DNSSEC, is it present? Archive history, uh, first scan November 29th of 2021, last scan September 21st of 2024. 46 changes, average size, average time between scans is about three weeks. Again, open ports 80, uh, 443 and 8080, that's weird. Um, but it's also unable to establish connections to all of these other popular ports. 
Uh, if we scroll back up again, SSL certificate, we can see uh, the the subject, the issuer. Uh, again, those curves when it expires, when it was renewed, uh, headers. All of this stuff is is pretty consistently available. And again, uh, we're not on any block lists. Our user agent is disallow for all user agents. Um, security uh, issues. Full. We can do a we can do a refetch report. And again, that's gonna fail for some reason. No phishing, no malware, uh, no DOH, which I should probably look at fixing maybe. Uh, again, more um, more DNS records. Uh, we've got kind of all of this stuff that we saw before, but both of those are my domains. So they're all gonna look fairly similar. We're gonna do one more. Um, and we're actually gonna take a look at zimaspace.com. That is one of the, like the, the Zima Cube, the Zima Blade, Zima, Zima Board, that company. Uh, we're gonna take a look at their domain just to see what kind of information might look different here versus what we've already taken a look at. Um, so it looks like this is also showing up in Canada, but if we take a look at the registrar, um, that is also showing up as Cloudflare. Uh, I'm willing to bet that their, their DNS is actually pointed to Cloudflare as well. Um, yeah, their C names are Mona and Langston.ns.cloudflare.com. So those are gonna look very similar. Cloudflare really does have a huge, huge presence for, uh, for DNS online. Um, but again, if we if we scroll down here, headers, we can see uh, the date, the content type, transfer encoding, security, uh, it is not present, the security.txt file not present, HSTS check enabled as uh, no, they might wanna fix that. Global ranking, um, it's actually not too bad. Redirects from Zemaspace and uh, www.zemaspace.com, some open ports. Maybe I don't need to worry about that. Maybe that's just a Cloudflare thing. Carbon footprint down here. Um, let's see, uh, domain who is, it was registered on August 20th of 2018, updated in April, expires in August. So anyway, you, you kind of get the idea. I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm just repeating myself here, but you can see how taking a look at some of these things might help you get more information about somebody who's emailing you from a domain name that you're not familiar with. Um, I really dig this. Um, and it's actually super, super simple to set up. Um, so let's let's actually take a look at the GitHub repository just real quick. Then we'll take a look at the at the hub.docker.com page and I'll show you how easy this is to get deployed. So uh, here we are, we're on the GitHub repository here. Um, and we can see that this has been updated in the last couple of months. Um, some of it is, is a few months old, some of it's more than a year old. Not everything has to be updated for it to be correct or, or, or current, right? Like a Docker Compose doesn't necessarily need to be updated all of the time. Um, but this is, this is it. This is the entire Docker Compose to get you started. Uh, super, super easy to deploy here. But let's actually scroll down a little bit. Actually, I lied. Let's take a look at the issues, right? Um, so there are 40 uh, issues open, but 61 of them are closed. Um, and if we do something like uh, Chromium, uh, we can see that people are actively, uh, well, it has been discussed uh, quite a bit, like screenshot broken. Um, and there, there's some people having conversations about these things. So maybe if you know how to fix this, maybe you can jump in and help get that solved. But anyway, there they are, um, you know, they've got ideas for, for subdomains, they've got ideas for uh, improving uh, security features. Like there's an actual active thing going on here, which I actually appreciate. Um, it looks like it's being kindly supported by Terminal Trove, so that's cool. Uh, contents about, so there's a good amount of information in here uh, for screenshots, demos, uh, which is not the one we were looking at earlier. Uh, that's interesting. Um, they've got all kinds of features in here where you can you can expand these and get more information about what each feature does and what you should expect from it, as well as useful links about that particular feature. So I really love the the links that this developer has gone into. It looks like uh, Lissy93 right up there, and of course. Um, right over here, sponsor this project. Uh, Alicia Sykes is, is Lissy93 there. I really dig this. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is the GitHub repository. As per usual, everything will be linked in the video description if you want to check this out. I encourage you to go through and look through uh, the documentation here on GitHub, look through the issues, see if there's any way you can help contribute to this. Earlier, I mentioned several different times about uh, environment variables in the Docker Compose. Um, and these, 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 these are they. Uh, so we've got like a Google Cloud API key, a React um, 
uh, app Shodan API key, a React Who API key, uh, ports, uh, API enable, rate limit, API timeout, Core's origin, Chrome path, um, disable GUI if you just wanted to run everything through, um, you know, like through through an SSH, through 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 the terminal or whatever, and the React app API uh, endpoint there. Um, and then there's more ways that you can can contribute not only to the project but to the community. So uh, lots of really really great information here on the GitHub repository. Uh, it looks like this currently has one point. Sorry, it has 1.7K forks, but 22,000 stars. That's actually pretty impressive. Um, if you dig this, go go give it a star. That would be that would be really cool if we could get that number to go up a little bit. So with that said, let's jump over to the GitHub repository real quick. Uh, here we go. Um, so this is this is the GitHub or the sorry not the GitHub repository the the Docker repository. Man. Um, but again, a, a lot of the same information here, not quite as outlined uh, as as over on the GitHub repository, but uh, links to get all of your different API keys that you might need to help get more information for your instance. Uh, now, the one thing I do want to point out here about this setup is that uh, it hasn't been updated in a couple of months, which is probably fine. But if we jump over to the tags, um, it's both, it's compatible with desktop and ARM64 processors. But these are big Docker images at almost a gig each. So the, the, the desktop processor, 944 megs, the ARM processor image, 851 megs. So just understand that when you go to deploy this, um, it may take a little while to download depending on your connection speed, traffic, things like that. So let's jump back over to here just real quick. I'm gonna grab this and pop that open in a new tab and 944, oops. 9443. There we go. And of course, every friggin' time. I really wish that um, Portainer would just have this roll over if there's any way to do that, rather than just saying, hey, this is wrong, then forward it over to the HTTPS version. I don't know. It's been a peeve of mine for a while. Um, so I'm gonna get logged in. And containers, uh, actually stacks, I lied. I've been doing a lot of stuff in here. So WebJack, um, now mine's gonna look a little different because I was doing some comparing and contrasting between a couple of different versions of this. But again, services web check, container name web check. Now this, this Lissy 93 is the official version of this. However, Marco's web check, he was doing some testing um, with regards to the Chromium thing, I think. So just ignore this. Uh, I would have, I try actually tried to switch it back earlier, but I've been doing so much testing over the past few hours with different containers and, and, and that sort of thing that I, I hit my I hit my I hit my cap on on downloading from hub.docker.com for the next six hours. So anyway, it should look like that. That said, you would actually need to probably install Chromium in your Docker instance in order to make this Chrome path work. And then of course, once you've uh, got your Docker Compose or your stack set up the way you want it to, with ports and with uh, the image and the environment variables and that sort of thing, you can then deploy it by scrolling down, clicking on the button here that would say, you know, deploy. Uh, give it a couple of seconds and then. And then you're going to get something that looks like this. And then you can start scanning different websites, whether they're your, they're your own to help improve your own security, or again, making sure that people who are contacting you are legit. So that's WebCheck. Um, it just popped up on my radar recently. Um, and I, I dig it. I, I really do like what's going on here. Um, again, links to everything uh, will be in the video description if you want to check that out. Um, if you want to support them, definitely go over and give Lissy93. Uh, I think it was Lissy, yeah, Lissy93. Go give go give that repository a star. Uh, maybe you can contribute to uh, to the to the, the production and some of the con uh, some of the issues that have been brought up here. Um, but yeah, if you want to support me, like and subscribe, that would be amazing. And of course, you can always become a channel member or a patron if you want to do that and help support the channel financially. And by doing that, you'll actually get early access to my content when it's available, but you'll also get ad-free access to my content. That's no baked in ads, that's no YouTube ads, none of that kind of stuff. So um, I think with all of that said, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Really wanted to share WebCheck with you. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and talk to you guys in the next video.